So I'm going to do problem number two. Problem number two says find each value of x on the interval from 0 to 2 pi for which tangent x is greater than or equal to secant x. So we have the interval from 0 to 2 pi and they want to know when tangent x is greater than or equal to secant x. So there is a common mistake with this problem, and the common mistake would just be dividing right away. And I'm going to show you the mistake and show you why it is a mistake. So the mistake would say this was sine x over cosine x less than or equal to 1 over cosine x. Now from here we can multiply each side by cosine to cross these. And all I'm left with is sine x is greater than or equal to 1. Now, I do not want to do this because what happens is I lose these cosine values that I just crossed off. So this is not what we want to do. So whenever you have trig values or you have an inequality, you always want to get all of them over to one side and set it equal to or less than or greater than zero. So instead, I'm going to do, um, from here, tangent x, we want to change these into sines and cosines because we know values for sines and cosines easier than tangent and secants. So tangent is going to be sine x over cosine x, and secant x is going to be 1 over cosine x. So I'm going to subtract the secant side over. So I have sine x over cosine x minus 1 over cosine x is greater than or equal to 0. Now because I have the same denominator, I can combine the numerator. So I have sine x minus 1 over cosine x is greater than or equal to 0. So now I'm going to evaluate each separately, the numerator and the denominator. Remember the denominator, when that equals 0, it's not in my domain because I can't subtract from 0. So that is going to be a critical number that we'll look at. But first I'm just going to deal with sine x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. I can add my sine over. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to add my 1 over. So from here, I'm just going to look at values when sine of x is equal to 1 instead of greater than, and then we'll do a number line test. So an important value here would be um, x equals pi over 2. Okay? And remember, it's not going to equal it, but we're going to do a number line test later to see when it's greater than. So I now also need to look at my denominator. So my denominator is cosine x, which cannot equal 0, otherwise the function's undefined. So when cosine x is 0, it's x cannot be um, 3. Ooh. The pi over 2 value, or 3 pi over 2. So now I'm going to test these on the number line, and we know my number line is from 0 to 2 pi. And I'm going to test pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Remember when you test that, you should test in the original equation or in this equation here because it's a little easier. And when I do this, I'm going to plug in values. So from here, um, anything less than pi over 2 I can plug in. In between here, we'll do this one first, it's a little easier. So in between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, I have pi. Right? So when I put pi into my original equation, I have 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1. Right? So this section works. And then when I plug my other two sections, say if I were to plug in pi over 3 here, or um, 11 pi over 6, whichever numbers you feel comfortable with, you're going to find out that this section doesn't work and that section does not work. Okay? Because when I plug in pi over 3, sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2, and then cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, so I'm going to times this by 2 over 1. I guess you get square root of 3 is greater than or equal to 2, and that is not the case. So that's why it doesn't work, and same thing why that one's not going to work. So your final answer 
I'll write it up here. Should be from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. And notice that these are um, parentheses, not brackets, even though it's greater than or equals to, because if they were to equal these numbers, then I would not be in my domain. And on your test, this is answer C. And that is problem number two.